Underwriters of the Arizona Mining Review include Mining Foundation of the Southwest, a nonprofit organization based in Tucson, Arizona, working to educate the public about mineral resources and the mineral extraction and processing industries. Welcome to the Arizona Mining Review. As you can tell, we're not in the studio today. We're at Mining Day at the State Capitol in Phoenix. This is a special event held uh, March 2nd to celebrate the importance of mining, its economic contribution. It's also a way to have the legislative members, their staffs, get to come out and meet members of the industry, some of our service and suppliers, and everyone gets to get acquainted and learn more about our mines. So let's go meet some of the companies that mine and supply services in Arizona. I'm Don Pilmore. I'm Director of Operations for Energy Fuels Resources. Uh, we're a uranium mining company. We have both uh, ISR and conventional assets. And I'm based in the uh, Fredonia field office that oversees operations of the Brexit pipe mines on the Arizona Strip. Currently, we're sinking shaft at our canyon deposit. We also have a deposit that's located on Arizona state land called the Wake, which is north of Seligman. And then in addition to that, we have uh, numerous resources and uh, properties that are permitted. Uh, for example, like the Dineros, uh, the Henry Mountains complex, the LaSalle complex. Those are all on standby. We also have the Roca Honda deposit in New Mexico, which is one of the uh, largest resources that has not been developed left in the United States that's a proven resource. And then we have uh, the Sheep Mountain properties up around Jeffrey City, Wyoming and the Gas Hills. And we have uh, our Nichols Ranch property, which is an ISR project where we are producing uranium from uh, in-situ leach operation. The uh, properties that we've worked in uh, northern Arizona on what we call the Arizona Strip are comprised of uh, the Arizona One mine. This project, uh, we had mined out the economic resource approximately a year and a half, two years ago. We do have a remaining resource, but the mine's on standby, waiting for the uh, market to recover. The Pine Nut Project, which is this property here, it's located approximately 10 miles from the Arizona One Brexit Pipe. And we mined this mine out. We depleted the resource at the end of September 2015. Uh, all of the equipment and supplies have been pulled out of the mine. We're currently moving those materials into, t into our Fredonia office and we will be moving into reclamation on the uh, Pine Nut Mine within the next six months. The active project that we have is our Canyon Mine. This uh, mine is located approximately uh, 10 miles south of Tucson, Arizona, and uh, we are currently sinking shaft on the canyon, uh, and we uh, hope to develop the canyon mine and, and bring it into production within the next two years. So that's kind of where we're at. We have been a, a major producer in uh, Arizona for the last three or four years and uh, we hope to continue. This ore all goes to our White Mesa mill in uh, Blanding, Utah. We have both the conventional mill feed that we ship from Arizona to the mill and then we also uh, take uh, alternate feed material. What we generate through the White Mesa Mill is yellow cake. And uh, for example, we say that the Arizona Strip are some of the richest uranium deposits in the United States. That being said, the average grade of the ore that's been mined on the uh, Arizona Strip in northern Arizona is 12 pounds of uranium for every 2,000 pounds of rock, or one ton and that's considered high grade. Um, and so that material is shipped to our blanding mill and from that they pull the uh, uranium out of that rock and the, the uranium they pull out is called yellow cake. 
the yellow cake is shipped to uh, fuel processing facilities and uh, made into fuel pellets for nuclear reactors. We sell uranium to several utilities here in the United States. Uh, we also uh, will sell to any uh, nuclear power plant that's in the need of fuel. One thing about uranium, everybody's uranium, whether it comes from Russia or Africa or uh, Australia, Canada, all the uranium is the same. Once it becomes yellow cake, everybody's yellow cake is the same and you can make the same fuel pellets with it. So good morning, I'm Pam Wilkinson and I'm with the University of Arizona, the Lowell Institute for Mineral Resources. My funding for my program, which is educational outreach about the mining industry, comes from the Mining Foundation of the Southwest. And they've been funding me for the last eight years to travel around the state of Arizona, talking to middle school and high school students about the mining industry and what it does for them. And so my presentations have hands-on activities where the students have to mine for beads or chips um, or today we're mining out of sand, we're mining copper BBs out of sand and the students today are having to be mining engineers and decide which piece of equipment will work better. Will the spoon work or the fork work? Which will get the most BBs out? So mining engineers do that, so it helps them understand that. Um, I have a traveling museum of over 40 rocks and minerals that I take with me around the state, and so the students can touch and hold, and it shows them which ones are mined in Arizona and which ones are mined in other countries. And it associates, helps them understand that their food, their clothing, their transportation, their communication, their housing, electric lighting, heaters and air conditioners, their health and their safety is all brought to them by people who extract rocks and minerals from the earth and those people are called miners. So without miners, their food would be native plants and very small animals. Without miners, their clothing would be made out of native plants. Without miners, their transportation would be walking. Without miners, their, trans their communication would be talking. So their life would be very, very different. Their health wouldn't be very good. There'd be no toothpaste. Um, they wouldn't be very safe because they'd be living in a house built out of sticks or straw. When the wind comes, it blows it down. So life in modern America is better, healthier, and safer because of the people we call miners. And through the last eight years, I started out, first year I talked to over 5,000 students uh, a year in classrooms. Last year I did over 10,000 students and I'm on track to do that again this year. There's a new Mining and Society Merit Badge that's out. Partnering with Freeport McMoran, we do Merit Badge workshops with those Boy Scouts so they earn the Mining and Society Merit Badge. Um, I do events like this for the public to help them understand, to work with the students and provide a hands-on activity that makes mining fun and interesting. So that's what I do. Hi, I'm Niall Nemeth with the Arizona Geological Survey. Empire Machinery has kindly provided some large equipment for us to visit today and take a look at this 100-ton haul truck. So we'll step inside here. All right. The survey today is uh, exhibiting, announcing a special release. We've been busy digitizing our historic mine records, not just historic, relatively recent stuff as well. So in the last four years, we've taken the um, collections from the former Department of Mines and Minerals, which was um, various collections from consulting geologists, other files that had come into the department and that the department engineers had filed away. And we've taken about 26 collections, over 400,000 pages of documents. Those are all available freely now at the mining data website. People can search for those by the types of commodities in the ground, whether that's gold, copper, silver. Uh, they can use some place keywords to filter that down by county. My name is Mike Fell with the State Mine Inspector's Office and I, I'm with the Education and Training uh, Division. As such, we do the training for the uh, mining community uh, for safety and, uh, and health uh, purposes. I've uh, seen the Arizona Geological Survey, the, uh, the mineral data site, and I gotta tell you, I use it as a resource in my, in my training classes. 
One of the things that we've never done really good in the past is uh, historical data. Sure, we talk about safety all the time, but the thing you should cons always consider is that even though we have talk about safety, we weren't always that safe in the past. And having that historical data available to us is a real, uh, real uh, a benefit. I think our mining community likes it, especially when we show them the old pictures of mining in, in, the, in Arizona in the old days, which they never saw before. It's a real good uh, resource. I use the Arizona Geological Survey mining data site uh, often. Uh, it's a fantastic resource for finding historical data, which otherwise may not be available. Uh, early 1900s production data, geological data, drill hole data. It's very useful working for a mining company, especially if you're interested in exploration. I use it all the time. There's also lots of information from exploration mining geologists, mining engineers, and other consultants prior exploration of mining companies. We have been targeting about 800,000 pages of text from reports that includes descriptions of mines, geology, assay, geophysics, all kinds of the things you'd expect to find, as well as about 10,000 mine maps, and those can be both surfaced underground, geology, geophysics, land status. We've also put out about a similar number of photographs, both historic and relatively current. We've correlated most of the documents to locations on the ground so we can say where these documents are associated to. And if somebody can find a location on a map, we can tell them if we have any documents related to that location. This becomes handy for not just prospectors, but peer exploration projects, but also homeowners or property owners that are interested in what activities may have been going on on their property in years past. Information can be found at our website. You can look at azgs.az.gov and look for the mining data portal. Good afternoon. I'm Dennis Sorensen, Director of Mining with Empire Southwest. We're the CAT dealership here in Arizona, serving the Arizona, state of Arizona, southeastern California, and northern Mexico. We've been a CAT dealer since 1950. Currently are working with, uh, under our third generation owner, Mr. Jeff Whiteman. And uh, we are here today at the Arizona Mining Day at the Capitol event here in Phoenix, Arizona. And we brought with us a 100 ton haul truck, Caterpillar haul truck, model 777G. Uh, this truck works out at the mines and as well as on construction sites, many other areas. And as a CAT dealer, we support, uh, supply and support this truck uh, along with many other models for the mines here in Arizona and throughout our territory. We have a lot of uh, rebuild capabilities and rental support and uh, transportation and anything that you would need to do to service any of this equipment. So we're happy to be here today and uh, appreciate uh, everybody's time.